Hey everyone, let's take a look at number two. It says in government data, a household consists of all occupants of a dwelling unit, while a family consists of two or more persons who live together and are related and are related by blood or marriage. So all families form households, but some households are not families. And here are the distributions. So the big difference, at least in these definitions, is that a household can have one person right? But you can see that a family can't, right? So a family has to be at least two people. And that's the big um, discrepancy between these two. In addition to the whole, you have to be related by blood or marriage. But let's take a look at our variable here. Our variable, you can see it, it's the number of people that are either living in a family or a household. And we have that defined here, right? We have our first variable x, we see number of people, right? And we have our next variable y. And again, we see number of people. And the, the difference is, are you in a household or are you in a family? So what we have here are discrete random variables. So let me write that down. I have discrete random variables. All right, and in both cases, I have a table given. So this is not a binomial situation. All right, I just, I have this table given. And what I'm going to do, even though um, I, I would do this on my physical calculator, I would put my variable in L1, my distribution for household probabilities in L2 and my distribution for family probabilities in L3. And I'm going to go ahead and I've, I've already run the numbers. Let me just show you real briefly. If I go here, I have everything in my lists. Okay. So in L1, L2, L3, but for time's sake, I'm not going to show you all of these calculations because our first um, question says make a histogram so that you can compare these two distributions. So that, that's gonna be a bunch of rectangles. And that's fine, I, I can make a comparative histogram, but really before I do anything, I do wanna figure out if there are outliers present so I can talk about any similarities or differences that I observe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just, I'm gonna tell you the calculator commands I used, and then I'm gonna write up the summary. So the first thing I looked into was the X variable, right? So this was the number, of persons in a household. And on my calculator, I went and I ran one var stats L1 comma L2 because my variable was in L1 and the probability distribution for households was in L2. And let me just summarize all of the statistics I took in. So I always take the min excuse me, I take the mean and the standard deviation and then I do the five number summary. Because as long as I have that five number summary, I can go ahead and figure out if there are outliers. So these numbers were 2.6, 1.42, 1.5, 4, and 7. And again, this is just from running one var stats L1, L2 with this data in L1 and this data in L2. So now to figure out if there were outliers, the first thing I need to do is figure out what is the IQR. And again, that's always Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, it was four minus 1.5, that would have gotten me to 2.5. I would take one and a half of those IQRs. So in this case, I would take 1.5 times 2.5. And when I crunch that number, I'm gonna get 3.75. And then I take that number and I subtract it from Q1. And at the same time, I add it to Q3 to build my safety zone. So this for this particular problem, it would be 1.5 minus 3.75, and this would be four plus 3.75. And if I look at my lower bound, it was negative 2.25, and my upper bound was 7.75. And so here's my safety zone for households. And if I look, my variable started at one, that was my min, right? And so one is inside the safety zone, and so is seven, that was my max, right? Or I guess I could reference them here. My min was one and my max was seven. Those are both inside the safety zone, so I don't have outliers. So that's good to know. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is that same process, but I'm going to do it for the families. So again, my variable is in L1, but the probability distributions for families are in L3. So let me scooch down here and let's rerun this. So this would be y would be the number of persons in a family. All right, and this one I'm gonna run one of our stats L1, L3, because my variable's in L1 and the probabilities for families are in L3, and let's get all of that data. And again, I already ran this, 
I'm just not showing this calculation for time's sake because this problem's going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so the numbers I got, I got 3.14, I got 1.25, and then we had 2, 2, 3, 4, and 7. So let's go run this. So we have our IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So that is going to be 4 minus 2, which is 2. I have one and a half IQRs, which would be 1.5 times 2, which is 3. And then I need to subtract that number from Q1, add it to Q3 to build my safety zone. So this is 2 minus 3, and this one is 4 plus 3. So we get a negative 1 here and a 7 here. Here's my safety zone. And again, if we look, the minimum was 2. That's inside the safety zone. The max is 7. It's inside the safety zone, just barely, but it's in there. So I have no outliers. All right, great. So as I start to think about that, because they're going to talk about similarities and differences, right? So I want to think about my socks. Well, if I look, let me go ahead and socks this one up just so we have it. So our shape, if we look at our shape, it looks like our mean, and let me use a different highlighter color. Our mean is a little bit larger than our median, so I'm going to be skewed right. Right? We said there's no outliers. Um, the center, it looks like it's, I'll go with the mean, is 2.6. And it looks like our range is 6. Okay, let me go ahead and socks this one up just so I can start comparing in a moment. All right, so again, if we take a look, our mean is larger than our median. Here's our mean at, excuse me, our mean at 3.14 and our median at 3. So again, I'm skewed right. There's no outliers. The center here is 3.14, oops, and then the range here is five. So if I look, I, I, things to just take note of, I can see that the families have a, a higher center, smaller range, those are differences, but I can see similarities in that both graphs are skewed right and neither have outliers. So keeping all of that in mind, let's go look at the options we have for histograms and see if we can start to piece some of this stuff together. So if I look at this one, part A, or the first option for A, if I look at the variable, that's not my variable, right? Household probability is not my variable. So this is not, this is not going to be the correct graph. Plus, if I also look, there's only one set of options here, right? This, this isn't graphing both X and Y. This was only graphing the family probability, only graphing, I should say, families. And I say that because the numbers up here are 0 0.42, 0 0.23, and so on. Those were, if we scroll back up, those were the family probabilities. So it's just, it, this graph doesn't have both distributions in it. So this is not it, and that means that this option, also not it. So let me pinch this a bit, because I can see here, this graph, this is good, all right? And I can see that they've got some comparative bars in there. So those are good, and then it'll come down to which socks are correct. Well, both distributions were skewed right, okay? Neither distribution had outliers, and that's where this fails, right? It says both distributions have outliers, so that's that's not correct, right? And then if we go ahead and we start taking a look here, we have that the median number for the people in the families was larger, right? And if we scroll back, right, I, I agree, the median number for families, well, the median, actually, I should point to, let me, let me change highlighter colors, the median here was three and the median here was only two. So families did have that bigger. That's correct. All right. And then if we look, is the range for households larger? Well, if I, I did comment on the range. So let me go back up, right? We knew that the range for the families was five and households was six. So households is larger. So this is the correct option. Okay. All right. So we've got that one. Let's go back up to B, take a look. All right, B says find the mean and standard deviation for both X and Y, and I'll change colors again. And we did, right? So we found the mean right there for households, and we found the standard deviation for households. We found the mean for families and the standard deviation for families. So you get that from your, from your one-var stats, so let's just match it up with the answers, and let's see what we got. So the mean wasn't 0.214. Uh, here, I see some people. That's good. Right, and these are just the incorrect numbers. So what's happening is this, this middle option here, 
that is the correct option and that's the one that I would wanna circle. And then let's see what the last question is saying. Let me scroll back up. All right, so this says calculate the probability that X is greater than three and the probability that Y is greater than or equal to three. So let's just take a look at the probability that X is greater than three and start with that. And let me go ahead and just erase some of my notes here just so that we aren't too cluttered. So if I want the probability that X is greater than three, you always wanna start inside these parentheses. X greater than three. All right, so is one greater than three? Nope, so let me go to red pen so we can do this. I do not want this. All right, is two greater than three? No, don't wanna include that. Is three greater than three? No, it's not. I don't wanna include that. Is four greater than three? It is. I wanna include that, I wanna include five, six, and seven. So when I talk about the probability that X is greater than three, another way of saying that is that X is four or five or six. Oops, let me. Or seven, I'm gonna run out of room. Ah, okay. So those are the, the possible values of our variable from our sample space that fit the stipulation that X has to be strictly greater than three. And since I'm talking about X, right, and that's the households, I'm just going to add these four numbers together, and that's going to be my answer. So I'm going to have 0.15 plus 0.07 plus 0.03 plus 0.01. And when I crunch that number and, and take care of that, I'm going to get 0.26. Now, on the flip of that, and I'm kind of getting crunched for, for room here, let me go ahead and try this one. If I want the probability that Y is greater than or equal to 3, well, let's start to figure out which options I want to include. So let me erase all of the work we previously had. All right, and then we'll keep in mind this was our y's down here. So if I want y greater than or equal to 3, do I want to include 1? Well, 1 is not greater than or equal to 3. I don't want it. Do I want to include 2? No, 2 is not greater than or equal to 3. Do I want to include 3? Yes, 3 is greater than or equal to 3. So we would include three in this case because the greater than or equal to is telling us to do that. And that is very different from that greater than. So I want to include three, four, five, six, and seven. So here I have a few numbers I want to add in, which is fine. So give me a moment to write this. This is the probability that y equals three or four or five or six or seven. And let's add those five numbers together. So we would add 0.23 plus 0.21 plus 0.09 plus 0.03 and then finally 0.02. And when I crunch all of those numbers, I'm going to get 0.58. So the numbers I'm looking for, this one was 0.26 and this was 0.58. And let's go look at our options for C and find those. So as I head down here, oops, there we go. All right. If I, I, I'll rewrite them here. We had the probability that X was greater than three was 0.26. And the probability that Y was greater than or equal to three was 0.58. And let's go find them. So that's not right. That's not right. This is right. Um, not right, right, right. Okay, so this is the one. There we go. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.